Education is one of the most important weapons. We wanted to transform education. In As we take stock of our accomplishment and shortcoming, we should not, by a slightest of chance, lose sight of our once ambitious team for education, total economic participation, and freedom for all. I thank you. A story of collaboration. Ten years of social capital building for education improvement. We now embark on a journey of reflecting on the origins of building social capital. of this partnership that we have with NECT. We know the department have their own uh, induction program, but we, it's quick with the NECT. As we correct you know, the mistakes of the past, uh, we are continuously needing to catch up to get our kids to read, to read for meaning, and so on. I think the NECT helped them understand that you have to fix education from a higher level down to the bottom if you want to see, you know, improved learning outcomes. The hallmark of NECT, sharp focus and ability to prove everything that we claim. You, 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 you can't postpone uh, the future of our children. forced us really to, to move in that kind of way. We, we didn't know what was coming, but you had to respond. Education is the cornerstone to uh, changing the face of poverty in this country. The first democratic elections in 1994 ignited hope for many South Africans. The early years of the new democratic dispensation were characterized by a commitment to realizing equality and equity across races, genders, and socioeconomic classes. In education, 
This period was characterized by an increase in access to basic education, the equalization of public spend on learners, and increasing matric enrollment and bachelor passes. This would be the beginning of the transformation in the landscape of the education ecosystem. After 1994, I was not in government. Uh, I was a public servant. We had to work with all these teacher unions, which have divergent views, their own concerns, their own challenges. In the history of education post-1994, we did not have a clear understanding of learning capabilities post-94. There were more than 18 departments of education divided according to race, geographic spread, tribal lines. And to bring those cultures together, those skills together, and those resources together was a real appeal. Because you, deal, you are dealing with a system which, which is very differently resourced. Where in, for instance, in your township schools, there just was no assistance except for paying for teachers. So committees, poor committees had to see for themselves. When the first systemic evaluation was done, and we realized how disadvantaged um, the African learners were in comparison to um, the kids from the uh, better off communities. But the biggest thing was the cultures, was also the, the, the resourcing and the skilling of the people who came from the different systems, uh, which had different objectives, different intentions. So for the first time, they are told that they have to pay for education. On the other hand, we have those that really have no money we're paying for their education. It took lots of convincing to say, the little money we have, we have to direct to those that don't have. So we're going to change the, the funding. So that also was a, a major issue. There were also management issues, the high levels of autonomy which they had, and then to remove certain powers to say, no, there's government here, you can't do as you wish. You are going to have to line up with everybody. That was another big one. You had also high expectations from people who came from nothing and then expecting really <coughs> proper things to happen for them. So there were also lots of tensions around just what is it that you're talking about? You've never heard about it. This is what we know about Christian education. On the other hand, even township schools to say, we're not resourced for this. We've not been trained. We've not been uh, engaged with. But it was quite tough. I can tell you on all aspects, it was difficult. That one was the most difficult one. Many of us dreamed of a better South Africa. In 2012, our government adopted a long-term vision and a plan for our country called the National Development Plan, the NDP. In 2012, almost 20 years since the first democratic elections, the National Development Plan, the NDP, was realized and symbolized a reignition of hope and commitment to making South Africa a better place for all. The 14-chapter plan outlines the areas of improvement necessary for creating a robust, entrepreneurial, and innovative economy. Central to the NDP was a call for stakeholder collaboration to assist governments to address these challenges. This clarion call was heeded by a group of influential South Africans and educationists who led the development of the Education Collaboration Framework, which would later be the basis for establishing the National Education Collaboration Trust in July 2013. The Landscape What we also are dealing with, which we want to update the nation about, it's the disastrous situation about overcrowding. Because that's one other factor which we think is going to undermine our work. There were a number of issues that are indicated earlier, protests by teacher unions around various areas that affect them as employees. Uh, there were issues around service delivery where, for instance, the distribution of learning and teaching material across the system 
uh, was really not where it should have been. We coming from a pre-1994 situation uh, with an education system that was serving the interest of a few, excluding the majority of all learners uh, in the country. So there is an attempt to try to address all the bad things that were there before 1994. So you look in terms of access, uh, making sure that you get more learners into the schooling system. Simple things like infrastructure, but more importantly like curriculum, where within a province there were, there were many interpretations to the central curriculum. And that can't be, because curriculum is a national competence, it's not a provincial competence. Especially in the poorer and remote areas or townships that were barely covering 50% of the curricula, which clearly then means that a lot of the learners that were coming out of the system were underprepared to get into the post-schooling system, whether it's community colleges or Tibet colleges or universities for that matter. And then when you have many players, and I take a simple example like uh, teaching children to read, if you have 20 different players, you're probably going to have 20 different methodologies coming out. If we have 20 methodologies, we'll have 20 directions. What stood out prior to the formation of the NECT was far, a far more fractious uh, entity that called itself education. There was a trust deficit uh, amongst the various role players in education reform at that time. I've come to accept that there's polarization generally between it's, it's government and us, government and the people, it's them and us. And it just seems to be, I think, the normal narrative to say there'll always be them and us, a, a government. And I, I think until you leave government, you, you're part of, of, of the enemy camp. And we have unions which also don't want to be uh, sweethearts to government. They're working with government when they're supposed to be defending their people. You have big business which wants value for money. And government is big. Sometimes you think your money is going to disappear and you want a, a, a structure which will account to you directly. You have researchers and individuals who want to keep their individuality and not be absorbed into government. So you have those interests which are genuine. There was distrust between, I think, uh, the unions, uh, government, um, business, as I've said, civil society. Business was clearly not satisfied with the, uh, the skills levels of young people coming out of basic education sometimes even coming out of higher education. You would know there's always been a, a question of trust uh, between uh, unions and business. And I think that derives from uh, the question of employment relations. You know? uh, we always relate to them as our bosses and they look at us as their workers. So we always look at them trying to exploit us, to oppress us and get uh, whatever from our labor and uh, with no return uh, for, for, for appreciation for, for our input. So when you get into a roof with them, you always look at them like that, that here are people who are exploiting us, here are people who are oppressing us, here are people who want us to sell our labor and they are not appreciating uh, what you are doing. So, so, so you enter from that trust deficit, but the more we met, the more we spoke, we then realized that no man, there is a bigger picture here that we ought to attend to. And the bigger picture was about our country. The bigger picture was about our children. It needed someone like our CEO um, who tried to ensure that everybody is comfortable. Uh, everybody feels heard. Uh, in order for them to be able to give their input or participate. Someone who, who knows the differences and the complexities um, and knows how to juggle around them. They might not speak on one voice, but at least um, try and, and, and understand each other and agree on, on how to handle uh, matters um, pertaining to the education system. In the NCT come as, as equal, so unions come there in their own right. Business comes, it sends representatives, researchers are there, NGOs are there, and this government were there. So it really creates a very 
nice platform where you don't find yourself pulled together and people feel that we've done the following government is not appreciating. And sometimes you appreciate just that you have no capacity. Teacher unions themselves are also assured that we are there, we're not talking labor issues, we're talking there as South Africans. So the deficit, the trust deficit would really not come negatively per se, but it will be a genuine concern about dealing with such a huge structure like government. So that you really feel that whatever you say, whatever you do, can be accounted for. The establishment of the NECT is a direct response to the call of an increase in standards by the NDP. The National Development Plan was very, very important because as we know, there's a number of chapters and there's a chapter that deals with basic education in the NDP. We created the reason for existence of the NECT and the objectives of the NECT around some of the key areas that are encapsulated in the National Development Plan. Of the five education goals of the NDP, goal number three speaks directly to the mandate of the NECT. 80% of schools achieving 50% in literacy, maths, and science. Forming the NECT, the National Education Collaboration Trust is a non-profit organization that was jointly founded by government, business, labor, and civil society. The organization's mission is to mobilize national capacity to assist government to achieve distinctive, substantial, and sustainable improvements in education. While many stakeholder collaborations have been established before, South Africa has not seen one of this magnitude. I think the key issue is that we got a respected businessman, Siswe, involved to chair the trust. The second important starting point was the, the agreement that um, if we work together, we can achieve more. 2012 marks the point at which uh, the South African nation had gotten to some agreement on what things needed to be done to improve the livelihoods of South Africans. There's a process that started in 2009. After I was appointed in 2009, having all the support from people. It really sometimes was problematic to coordinate everybody else who genuinely wanted to support and come to the core. So when the NECT came, it came with a very beautiful concept. It was after the launch of the NDP and the whole call by President Zuma of making education a societal issue. The planning commission was appointed to investigate what the development blockages were and how to respond to those development uh, blockages. It was quite a beautiful coincidence because it was an initiative of your top South Africans. So I got involved as because I was a minister. But themselves, Nabo, Bobby Godsell, Ramaphosa, Masana, and other people, they, did, and they, they, they met and felt that as senior village men and women, they want to come together and form this thing. So I got to participate in that collaboration through my role as an education uh, minister. So I being, you know, at the JET Education Services was actually, um, you know, called by the current minister, Minister Mutecha, and the then group CEO of the uh, of First Friend, the current chairman of the NCT, Mr. Sizi Masan. To come think through, you know, how we can, how we assist, you know, with the implementation of the of the NDP, taking into account the fertile, you know, uh, ground uh, bred over the years by the private sector who had invested a lot of corporate social investment in uh, in, uh, in in education. We then started talking to them. We started talking to teacher unions, and we ran a survey of about 40, uh, you know, kind of intellectually active, you know, people in education, academics, you know, NGO people, unionists, um, even some commentators on, 
on the public media, we asked them what they thought was going wrong in education. And the second we asked them, how could those things be addressed in the short term and the long term? The discussions firstly started on us getting common purpose around the need for collaboration. That was important. The second was getting a common understanding how we could work with government, together with government, thinking through what the structures would look like and how in such a broad education ecosystem you could have different parties, different stakeholders together, but, and, but also hear the voice of the different stakeholders. You see uh, NACT playing a role uh, in, in getting your stakeholders playing part in education, your DSC, which is District Steering Committee, you see in the issue of foundation phase. So you know you can't build any house without proper foundation. Between President Zuma and Kalima, there was just such goodwill to deal and sort out education and get everybody to, to, to listen. Out of the survey, we got um, a map of 21 issues. We, um, we further process those issues into six thematic areas, which on the basis of which the NECT was founded, ultimately. These are a, a need to focus on the professionalization of teaching, promotion of courageous leadership in education. Three, it was contributing to resourcing of education. Four, focus on building the capacity of the state. And five, involved um, promoting community involvement. And the sixth one was contributing to the betterment of the welfare of learners and teachers in the system. If I think of some of the more diverse, contested con uh, discussions, were possibly about what is the structure going to look like? You know, how are we going to encourage collaboration? M some discussion on, well, what will next? What will this entity do? Because collaboration is both an intent and an action. And it was about this action. What does collaboration mean in real terms? You have a government that pumps, pumps in billions of money into education. They're also in charge of policy. On the other hand, you've got teacher, teacher unions, very strong. Uh, they've got their own interests. Then you've got the whole NGO world throwing a lot of money into or working that space of education. You've got uh, companies that also spend a lot of money on CSI, on education and also community-based organizations also claiming to be doing a lot of work in education. But there was no one voice that came together to bring all these voices together. From the beginning, from the word go, from everybody buying into establishing this organization. Um, because if people were not interested in the vision and mission of the organization, then they wouldn't have participated. If everybody, unions, business, government, uh, you know, agreed to participate as re their responsibility to ensure that um, this collaboration works. The very first dialogue which gave birth to the education collaboration framework, I was quite happy to host that dialogue to bring different stakeholders into a room where they could discuss and find solutions to the problems, the intractable problems that we face as a country. That dialogue uh, cemented the commitment for private sector, labor, NGOs or civil society and government to work together to implement or set up a coordination structure that would help with the implementation of very important education you know, improvement work around those six themes that I spoke about. One of my fundamental beliefs has always been that business must play a role much bigger than just serving the needs of their shareholders or their customers or their employees. Business, particularly in the context of South Africa, where we're dealing with inequality, poverty, and unemployment, has a very important role to play in addressing some of those systemic and structural issues in our country, which is why 
I was quite happy to host that dialogue, to bring different stakeholders into a room where they could discuss and find solutions to the problems, the intractable problems that we face as a country. Uh, and that's how the NECT actually came into being. Achievements. Uh... So there are a number of highlights really that one can point to. I think um, I, will, I will look at this, the achievements on different levels. Look, the greatest achievement is the establishment of the NECT itself. Through the building of social capital, the NECT has reached 90% of the public schooling system through teacher professionalization, courageous and effective leadership, resourcing, community and parent involvement, and learner support and well-being. The single most important achievement is the recognition that we need proper impact evaluation and that we need to direct our funding in those areas which have been proven to be effective in the context of South African schools. If NECT was there when, when I started, I would have benefited. Uh, look at the issue of mentorship, which was not there before. You come from the university, like I told you, I did BA Arts, which is not teaching. So there was no method of teaching. You only do one year method of teaching. Then you now go to a class without anybody mentoring you and you must produce results. You know, grade 12 is about producing results. Fortunately, my first, I think that was the lowest result that I produced was 95%. And up to then, all the years that I taught, I was producing 100%. So, but I'm saying the quality of the results, looking at the support that our new teachers are getting, if we receive that kind of report, I think our education will be better than where we are today. The fact that now there is a partnership and a collaboration between the Department of Basic Education the civil society and unions working together towards a common goal, I think it has improved dialogues between the different stakeholders um, in order to be able to address whatever issues that each of them might have of each other. What the NECT also offers us is a, a repository, if you like, of uh, of different skills that they are able to bring into the organization uh, at kind of very short notice. Something that we don't have the ability to do very well in government. Government is a bureaucracy, it takes quite long to turn, you know, it's difficult to, to kind of turn the ship around. Whereas if you have an agile organization that's flexible, that can adapt quite quickly, they can buy in skills, uh, they're able to address things that we struggle with. And so the Education Technical Assistance Office uh, is one such office. So th th they assist us with very difficult areas that we kind of struggle to wrap our, our heads around in terms of how to position. The results of what people say, of what uh, people in the field say and want, and they, and they invite the NECT in, when the users, the end users, invite an NGO in instead of the department, the department gets very angry and tries to jettison the, NC, the NGO. Here, we've, we've built up a, a level of trust where that tension doesn't exist. And I think that's very valuable. I joined NECT, like I said, when I was now a circuit manager because I became a circuit manager in 2008. It was before the NECT also. So when NECT came um, in, in November, they, were, they started with schools that were underperforming. And it really assisted a lot because they were guys, I can't remember how they were called, but they were trained by NECT to assist us on how to get schools out of underperformance. Then, and those skills that we learned I think I'm also using them now as a director because it, it really worked. And we, for, for quite a number, I think for seven years, for 10 years that I worked as the second manager, I didn't have an underperforming school. I found underperforming school, but I worked on them. So what I'm saying is that the benefit of NECT in mentoring, it assisted me also as a second manager 
to understand what is it that you need to do to make schools to work? I mean, I think the, the strength of the NECT is it really rebuilt very strong relationships between civil society and the state. So the minister, for example, was in regular contact with the department, but also regular contact with the NECT. And it's really important that civil society have opportunities to make contact with the minister directly. When you get people, they must get running. And how do you get them running? You must equip them. So NECT come handy in assisting us in getting our subject advisors also doing well. I was very struck by the way a principal of a school, a rural school, uh, used the material to better manage his school and to better support his teachers. Now, if, if we've achieved nothing else, and we can do that in every school, I think we would have achieved what we set out to do. Beginning of the year, we appoint new teachers so NECT comes in, in first term, and which is very critical, where our teachers are taken through, which I said initially that if we all had mentoring, coaching to understand what is it that I need to do fresh from the university when I get into the class, and this is the most benefit to me, that is what NECT should not stop doing because it is helping building confidence in our teachers. Because some of them, yes, they are teachers, some they chose to be teachers, some because of other things became teachers. And now if they don't have somebody who hold them by the hand to show them what to do, then they get frustrated. So we are very thankful that this help from any city, it's also empowering and we are getting our young people enjoying the work that they are doing in our schools. Over 103,641, being 25% of teachers, have been reached across all nine provinces. 22,812, being 91% of schools, have been reached across all nine provinces. Courageous and effective leadership. A total of 16,511 schools managed to be trained on curriculum and learning management across four provinces. Over 70%, being 53 districts, have been reached through the District Improvement Program. Resourcing The NECT has mobilized resources to provide a total of 5,126 toilet seats to 460 schools across three provinces. A total of 35.2 million teacher and learner support materials have been printed and distributed across the country. Community and parent involvement. Through community and parent involvement, over 140 dialogues and stakeholder engagements have been hosted since 2014. 27,000 parents and community members have been reached through the Reading Advocacy Initiative since 2019. 5,687 community and school-based beneficiaries were empowered to provide psychosocial support to learners and teachers. A total of 1,917 learners have been reached through the Ubuntu Youth Leaders Program. The NECT also provided targeted and strategic support to respond to critical education improvement challenges. The Department of Basic Education launched the Sanitation Appropriate for Education Initiative, SAFE project, with the aim of removing all basic pit toilets in schools. With the SAFE, the NECT came in because, again, this... Uh, partnerships that we, we want with the private sector and the private sector is also sometimes uncomfortable to come into the big pot with yourselves but also to test your, 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 your alternative models. Government is a good system, just don't wake up in the morning and say then you allow them to do. It just has to, there must be a process of really uh, processing them. Through NCT we were able to get Ubo Yusupal to come on we're able to get AFPOP coming in. So we're able to mobilize well, pig and pay, the private sector, coming in quick. And they came in earlier. Whilst we're still applying for money from Treasury, we're putting systems, 
what is going to, who's going to build, they were able to move in quickly with the private sector. You said we're, we're not engineers, yeah, but, but we can get engineers if that's what you want, yeah. And not only did we get it done, but I think at a fraction of the cost that government was going to pay for, for getting the same thing done, yeah. They were able to move in quickly and test some of the models, this alternative material process their money, and I think these companies themselves wanted to showcase what they can do so that when government goes big, then they're already in the space. So it, it, it really helped a lot in terms of testing alternative model, but also becoming a forum where we, we are able to benefit from, from the private sector. That's where they came big. Through this initiative, over 5,200 ablution facilities have been provided to 650 schools, including handwashing stations, to 123 schools at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. And don't even have electricity. South Africa and the rest of the world come to a standstill. COVID-19, a highly contagious and unprecedented virus, forces countries to shut down their economy. An initial three-week shutdown in South Africa is announced in March 2020, but would actually last almost two years. What did this disruption mean for education in South Africa? That was my biggest fear. Our system still fragile. It's not robust enough to withstand lots of storms and having been in the sector, just know it's quite easy for kids to crack and if they break, it's, it, 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 it's just difficult to bring them together. The education sector was caught completely off guard, completely, completely, completely unprepared. And the question was, how do we get to learners at the time when they were sitting at home, no access to school, no access to their teachers. And meanwhile, the education minister was saying the grade 12 class is writing the exam at the end of the year. Cabinet has decided today that all public schools should take a break for the next... I mean, I literally went home and I sat and I was like, what? What are we going to do? Hmm? Somebody's got to get out of their house and get some things, you know, going. If they stay too long not going to school, they get used to not attending school. And just to bring them to line is a problem. There were a number of disruptions that ended up creating learning losses amongst a lot of our learners. There's a, there were big changes uh, because of COVID. Um, if you're not able to adapt as an organization um, to the environment, then, then you don't live long. We know even as teachers, when it's school holidays, the first week trying to settle kids out. You even know about the length of the holiday. In January, you know the first week you're settling them in just to get them to settle down. But if they stay for too long, three months, six months, to settle them and bring them to, just to, to, to focus, it, it, it's a big task. And I already was very worried about that. That will get high dropout rates and we will get kids who are disaffectionate. I mean, we have weeks in when I go and do voluntary work, but like they're playing skipping. So you could see that to now bring them after three months, four months, to a formal setting would be a, a big problem. Even time, I mean, education is time bound. When you say it's 12 years, we know exactly what is in the 12 years. When you say it must be 231 days, not less, not more, we know that every day counts and other things. And if you lose, a week, a month, you know, you, you really are losing a lot. So I was very worried really about the reversals that we're going to get or which we're beginning to feel with COVID-19. The NECT had a significant role to play to limit the impact of COVID-19 on learning and teaching time. So we then started talking to each other, the department, provincial department, whoever was playing there, some funders, put some things together. Such is life. There's a hillock after every hill. You have to keep climbing, keep climbing, keep climbing. And if you keep climbing, you're moving forward. So I think um, through the stakeholder management pillar of the NECT, we were able to just get everyone talking the same language. Um, 
making sure that we get to the point, you know, like we didn't have enough time to to sit down for too long mm -hmm. and discuss what next and all of that. It was an emergency kind of um, situation that necessitated an emergency response. The one benefit that we had during COVID, because they were closing the schools and opening the schools and then doing this, and so the NECT said, communicate with your community. And so the NECT set up an online interaction and invited everybody and his brother who's involved in education with the minister communicating to this audience and explaining why we're closing the schools, why we're having these rules, why we're opening them. And the audience didn't always agree with her, but were very appreciative of the fact that there was this communication and that they were regarded as important enough to give them the background. Having this kind of social capital that the NECT has, we were able to just put everyone on the same wavelength, basically. Just talking about this is the end goal, this is what we want to see um, out of this situation. We need to see education continuity. Um, and also because we are in an emergency um, state, we need to work with speed, agility, you know. Um, at some point we have to let go of what we knew worked and start a new trend of how things should go. The agility of the NECT in the sector um, and, and you add to it or you, you know, based on the social capital that has built, enabled it to intervene and was accepted in its interventions when it was required. During the lockdown, during the, you know, the floods in KZN and even during the riots. Um, so when it happens, everybody in society realizes, oh, we're in trouble. And the NECT raises its head or its, its hand was acceptance that the NECT could be allowed in. I mean, in a matter of a month, the NECT had collected data during the lockdown to inform the National Coronavirus Control Council on whether or not to bring back the, the learners to schools, in what numbers, um, and whether safety you know, conditions were in place and so on. I mean, who would have organized and get going and, and present a report in a month? Actually, government takes years to appoint anybody to do anything. So the fact that we had a structure like the NECT made it easy and, and it has a social capital trusted in nationally by North National Corona Con Control Council, by cabinet, by unions, by whoever. It was just, you know, um, you know an opportune organization to get in there. We were able to have an education system that continued to run, unlike a lot of other countries, including some of the countries in the continent, that actually suspended school for a year, some of the countries for more than a year. South Africa was able to continue with learning and teaching even during the COVID era because we, through the NECT and supporting the Department of Basic Education, had already created structures that were going to make sure that uh, the learning losses were mitigated and we didn't have the adverse and negative impact of COVID that we saw elsewhere. Between 2020 and 2021, Almost 90 million worth of financial and in-kind contributions were made to the Education COVID-19 Response Project. This saw the introduction of remote and digital learning, which ensured that 6 million learners and teachers were supported on curriculum coverage. The NECT supported school managers and community leaders to respond to the emotional and mental health impact of the pandemic through psychosocial support programs that have reached 65,000 learners, teachers, and community members. The future of collaboration in education. Considering the changing global and local development landscape,
and the need for continued support to education towards the 2030 NDP goals. What does the future of education collaboration look like? The future of collaboration is always positive. I think collaboration is the way to go. You know, we live in a country where government can solve all the problems and issues and challenges that we face as a country. Uh, the NECT's role into the future is still needed for a variety of reasons. Because education is such a vast, vast uh, project in this country, um, almost 14 million children, and that's not counting grade arts, 14 million. When you think about that, there's got to be things that go wrong. And we haven't yet eradicated the, the impact of the past. We now require different solutions that are driven by collaboration. We know governments don't have money, so the private sector has to uh, play a key role in helping our country to deliver quality education. I mean, we're in a global economic crisis, so more than ever, there's a need to collaborate and to pool our resources to support government. There is room to innovate in this special kind of vehicle that's been mm. set up. Mm. Yeah. There's room to do things differently. There isn't enough money in the public sector to realize that goal. So you're going to need different partnerships, different solutions, all driven by uh, improved collaboration to deliver on that goal. So we don't need less collaboration. We need more. We need different collaboration. We need strategic collaboration. And I think the NECT is better placed to support that aim because it has the muscle, it has the history, it has the network. There have been uh, buzzwords such as educational transformation, paradigm shift, and uh, I thought those were just events. They are a process which can take more longer than we thought. And I just want to say that NECT is more, even more relevant today than when it started because the vision has become more clearer. And I think um, they are a victim of their own success because we have higher expectations from the NECT. And I believe that it can live up to that aim. The achievements of the National Education Collaboration Trust over the past decade have been a collaborative effort of many actors who have played a significant role both in the public space and behind closed doors where the designing of these various education interventions have taken place. A collaboration of people who are passionate about the education of every South African child and the role that each child plays in the building of our economy, from the Board of Trustees to the 110 staff members who are spread across five provinces to drive the mission and the vision of NECT. Staying the course towards the 2030 NDP education goals is necessary to ensure that every South African child possesses the skills, knowledge and attitudes to enable them to live economically gainful and fulfilled lives. Key to achieving this will be the ability to identify opportunities and create platforms for future collaborations that will benefit over 13 million learners and 440,000 teachers in this country. Hello everyone, I am Dini Konkuzana, the District Director for Capricorn South. I want to wish uh, NECT 10th anniversary you will correct me. So we are saying to NECT as Capricorn South in Limpopo, we have benefited quite a lot from you starting there and now we are celebrating your 10th year's anniversary. We are saying continue to grow, continue to invest in education. The partnership that we have with NECT, we can show there are benefits in the district, there are benefits even in the province. So we are saying NECT, 
grow. Halala NUCT, halala. Thank you. My head is in literacy and reading. And if we can improve the levels of reading for meaning in all our schools, then we can retire happy chappies. I would like to congratulate uh, the organizations that set up the NECT and participated in the NECT and the NECT staff itself uh, because I think you know, all of those who are in the north of 200 organizations um, are winners in this whole 10 years, you know, journey of the NST. I would like to see a much stronger, more strategic uh, NST well positioned to enable our learners, teachers and officials take the best you know, chances of the opportunities to improve our education system into the future. In, in conclusion, I think we're better off for having the NECT than not having it. Um, one may not always be able to say this was a, a runaway success and that was a failure, but certainly it would have been a greater failure if they weren't there. Or it would have been less of a success if they weren't there. And that is the thought I'd leave you with. We can all play a very important role in the lives of young people. Inequality, unemployment and poverty continues to be a huge challenge and young people are particularly affected by this. Platforms such as the National Education Collaboration Trust, the NECT, are really important in mobilizing different stakeholders to address the issues that confront our country, particularly those that affect education, which in turn affects a lot of our young people. So I'm just calling upon all our stakeholders to get involved in supporting that one young person, that young child, get into school, read to them, understand issues such as mathematics or subjects such as mathematics, and we can all make a huge impact in the lives of many people out there. Thank you. When you leave here, I will probably say, ah, I should have said that. I never scored posing in there. You know, that cameraman was so accurate, Urbali. But you were, tell, you were asking me for my detailed, I mean, and, and some of the things you... <laughs> there were clashes of titans. <laughs> at the times. We can retire happy chappies.